And I was in Brooklyn uh, during the months of lockdown. Um, so in these uh, months, I've seen the city really change dramatically in consequence of the pandemic. The, the management of the pandemic has been characterized basically everywhere by the attempt to negotiate between the necessity of uh, um, curbing the, the rate of infection with the enormous pressure coming from uh, capitalist sectors, companies uh, and organizations to actually reopen, so to, to get the economy uh, uh, going on. We will get Florida back on its feet by using an approach that is safe, smart, and step by step. And of course, this pressure is uh, really a direct attack against labor, against workers, because it really jeopardizes uh, even their lives. <laughs> so basically, the demand is to, uh, to, to work until, until, until they die. Um, so not by chance, if we look at the places where, for example, in the United States, where infections really skyrocketed and also deaths increased, one of the first places is meatpacking factories. Uh, so in other words, uh, you know, the, 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 con the health conditions and conditions of labor within uh, the meatpacking uh, industry were such that uh, uh, they really uh, were conducive to um, a high rate of infection. So there was even a, a, a crisis uh, within the within this sector because uh, uh, basically workers are, were getting sick and could not, could not go to work. So there is clearly a, a very direct relationship, let's say, uh, between uh, um, uh, class and the differential impact of the pandemic. One could also multiply examples, uh, and already the fact that, you know, uh, to go back to New York, a sector of the population uh, managed to basically flee the city as soon as the lockdown started because they had second homes. Welcome to the farmhouse. And here's their new house, 60 miles from the city in Ridgefield, Connecticut. You know, essential workers or, you know, working class people didn't have any choice but to stay in the city and to risk their lives by continuing to work, taking public means of transportation and so on. Uh, in terms of race, the data are absolutely clear. Uh, in the United States, black and Latino people are the most affected by COVID-related deaths. Uh, there is really an enormous disproportion and balance uh, along uh, race lines. Now, in order to understand this, we need to take into account the, uh, the internal relation of class and race. So in other words, what is that is uh, uh, contributing heavily uh, to um, to high rates of infection and deaths among black and brown people, it is uh, on the one hand their uh, uh, placement in the division of labor. So when we talk about the you know, so-called essential workers, we are talking for the, for the main part of racialized workers. And these are the sectors of workers who were most exposed to, uh, to risk of infection. The second aspect has to do with social reproduction. So in other words, where do these people live? and what kind of access they have to healthcare, what kind of housing arrangements they have. So do they live in cramped uh, apartments, crowded uh, uh, living spaces? Uh, um, uh, what kind of access to means of transportation <laughs> they have and how safe this is? So all this has to do with uh, basically the way people reproduce themselves under capitalist conditions. And this also has contributed enormously to an increase of the rate of infection and deaths uh, among uh, um, racialized people. Well, one of the consequences of uh, lockdowns has been the overlapping, for, at least for some sectors of the population and of workers, the overlapping of workplace and home. Families were left to basically provide social reproduction services, so care, for example, childcare, elderly care, and so on, in the home while also having to work from home. Now, given the disproportionate um, uh, involvement of women and feminized people in social reproduction activity, in, in the work of care, uh, this has impacted especially uh, women and feminized people, so the people who actually do uh, this kind of work. NBC News reached out to 35 organizations in 19 states. In some places, hotline calls more than doubled, becoming shorter and more frantic. Lockdowns were uh, um, imagined and put in place 
um, on the assumption that families are safe places. But families, we know, are not actually safe for everybody. And being stuck and quarantined uh, in this situation, of course, this contributed to uh, not only an increase of uh, domestic violence, but also an increase of mental health problems and, uh, um, and suicides. Elections are not a solution to the problems I mentioned. Um, so there, we should not cultivate this illusion. Um, and in terms of the current elections, uh, I would say there are no good options and no good outcomes, uh, which doesn't mean that all outcomes are, are the same, but simply that we sh should not have illusions. So the ticket Biden-Harris uh, may be appealing in terms of liberal identity politics, but uh, uh, in terms of you know, political perspectives, is actually a reproduction of the old. Biden even attacked uh, universal public health care in a time of pandemic uh, during the, the, the primaries debate. On the other hand, the re-election of Trump would be a catastrophe, and I don't want to mince words here, uh, it would be catastrophic not only in terms of uh, the concrete politics of the administration, not only this, but uh, Trump's re-election uh, would be extremely dangerous from the viewpoint of the growth of a very dangerous, uh, aggressive and violent far right, which is xenophobic, white supremacist in the United States, and misogynist. Then there is the... Uh, the third scenario, which is that um, a scenario in which Trump doesn't concede, um, there is the concrete possibility that Trump may um, challenge the legitimacy of the vote because it's, it is a vote by mail. And in that case, um, we would not only have uh, possibly an accelerated institutional crisis, uh, but this also could result once again in further violent activism from far-right fringes. These elections will not provide any answer to the fundamental inequalities and social contradictions of this country.